We're the reason they put speakers in your car. Why don't you get it fucked out? Tell me what you learned in grade school. Give it to me like you wanted. Did you forget It's the Bobby Dollar movie? Show. What is I love it when Welcome started? Back. It should really be given to you. You intro, who this? Fill you up and leave me empty. Baby, was that the my mistake? Let's go. Covering his feelings. Going through changes. Let's go. So mad right now, I can't even think straight. So I'ma just tweet it and delete it. You hear me? Knowing you won't read it before we get too far away. Hey, y'all, what it do, man? It's your big homie, Bobby Dallas. And today, I want to invite you all into a bonus episode. Yeah, we do know already that uh, we still living out uh, sex timber. <laughs> hey, shout out to Crystal Holloway, man. Hey, I've, been, I've been riding this all, all um, month, man. You know, I even got a few other people jumping in, too, man. That was a great idea, Crystal. Hey, if y'all ain't listening to Life Alliance podcast, y'all need to go ahead and check that out. You hear me? But uh, if I didn't introduce you, I want to introduce you right back into another episode of the Bobby Dollar Show. Today, we just chilling, man. Real laid back. We're going to do some sex facts today, man. You know, um, I decided to uh, go ahead and look up, do a little research, you know, because I wanted to make sure y'all knew that I was talking some real shit. You did. <laughs> But uh, I decided to go ahead and do a little research, man, so I can throw some facts out here at y'all, man, so that way y'all can be progressive and not aggressive. You know what I'm saying? Progressive is much better, not aggressive. Don't be no weirdo, fucking pervs. But, you know, <laughs> it is what it is, man. But, um, I don't know, man, let's go ahead and jump into this. You know, uh, I think uh, we're going to go ahead and start with the fellas because I don't really have much to talk about the dudes like I really want to, but... We got some interesting stuff about the fellas, man, you know, so we're going to start with them. Now, let's say with the guys, man, it is true that more than half men out here nowadays are having sex. Um, back in the day, man, it was one of them things where it was a race, like you were straight having sex before at the age of 18. I mean, from the standpoint of a man, but I went and found some facts, man, from a uh, badgirlsbible.com <laughs> and uh, got this information and basically what they're saying right now that the numbers of men having sex before 18 have absolutely went down. they saying um, men are increasingly delaying sexual intercourse, which is cool, man. I mean, in fact, it's like uh, they're saying one out of every four men has not had intercourse nowadays until at least the age of 19. Hey, that's awesome, man. I'm, I'm with that part because you don't never know what be going on, man, and all these songs, and they talking about eating groceries and shit. And that's, that's all another thing, though. But, but for right now, hey, kudos to everybody that's out here waiting, taking their time, waiting and debating for a coochie. Not like, that's cool, man. That's, that's awesome, man. Good job. Like, sometimes I do wish I would have waited, but certain circumstances, well, anyway, so let's jump into some facts, man. Um, I think I'm, I'm ready to go ahead and, and face the music here because I am a man and we're going to talk about me. Hmm. All right, so I had to take some water, man, my bad. You know what I'm saying? I'll be smoking this shit. All right, so the first fact, in case y'all didn't know, and I know a lot of people do know this, but this is just to confirm, men do have a G-spot. Yes, men have a G-spot too. <laughs> the male G-spot for men that don't know, <clears throat> it's called the prostate. Okay, it's a sensitive organ. It can be stimulated from the ass. <laughs> I mean, like, it's a little space between the asshole and the scrotum. It's a little space between the anus and the scrotum, you know what I'm saying, that can affect that. Um, and like I said, also through the anus. Oh, Jesus. Um, it's like a little walnut size um, little piece i think like you can stick your fingers in there like three inches or something i don't know two inches and you'll feel it and it's supposed to like make the men go crazy um oh jesus a lot of men do like this stimulation though um i had this talk with oh my jesus molly what the hell have you done to me? <laughs> i had this talk with molly man you know what i'm saying molly with the most podcast if you didn't know 
<sighs> we was talking about pegging, man, and this is a true statement. Many couples enjoy prostate stimulation either manually or with toys. Some strap-ons are used by women or men, which is also known as pegging. Oh, Jesus. I mean, how in the hell did we get here? You know what? We're going to go on, on to the next fact because <laughs> if this was a live show, I'm sure Molly would have called in right now. <laughs> All right, that's what's up, man. So, all right, we're going we're gonna to talk about uh, penis size simply because that's something that all men talk about and women claim they hate to hear about, but talk about in their own uh, areas and rooms and hang out. So the facts are here, man, um, from the, uh, the Kinsley survey of 1979, the average size of an erect penis is five inches, 5.65 inches. OK, that is the truth. No lies behind it. All right, so that means that um, if you got six inches or above, you're average. Anything under six inches, you're not average. All right, so <laughs> stop looking in the mirrors. It ain't the angles. <laughs> I don't take pictures above. <laughs> stop sending them motherfuckers, dog. Stay out the DM. Just leave that shit alone, bro. That's not your game. Just <laughs> six, we good. That's what it is, average, okay? All right, so... Um, I see that's what the researchers had narrowed it down to. Um, they didn't do the ethnicity thing, so that shit didn't play a factor. So we're not even gonna ride down that road. We're gonna we're gonna stay focused here. We tunnel vision right now. Um it was also some studies that was done uh when it came to women and they was asked about the man's penis. Um they like slightly longer, they like uh wider, they prefer the curve. Um it's the thing about casual situations that they don't like, I guess, um, I'm not sure, but the casual situations, they really like, I guess, larger for that. But it's stated that in relationships and marriage and all that kind of stuff, they like average in a slightly above average, I guess for the rest of their life. So <laughs> that's what's up. Um, average is winning. Basically, like, yeah, I'm gonna get married, take care of the kids. How your dad, boy, I put your new balance on, nigga, you straight. I got some new balance on right now. <laughs> hey, that's what's up, man. Hey, it's all good. So, that's what we're working with right now on that. So, um, sometimes it's not all about the size, um, but it is how you interact, you know what I'm saying, and interact with his or her body. Uh, sometimes height is an influence for women as well as his attractiveness, the smell, things like that. Um, so sometimes, I guess when a woman is actually looking for a soulmate or somebody that she's gonna be with forever, she ain't too much tripping off the size as much as if it's a one night stand or she just, I guess what they call them on the prowl, some, I don't know, man, shit, I, I don't know. But anyway, um, <laughs> it is important to consider <clears throat> that there are two types of men, okay? Now, this is something y'all gotta understand, bro. You got showers and you got growers, okay? That's not nothing just for TV. Like, this is some literal shit that they speaking on here in the bad girls Bible, okay? So what they saying with the showers and the growers, you hear me? A shower is a larger, flaccid penis, okay? That means that when he ain't hard, he look nice, all right? That's something that he could show her and she could take pictures of and be like, look how hard, look, he ain't even hard, girl. This motherfucker, right? That's that's what that's what that's all about. But a grower, on the other hand, he has a smaller penis when it's soft. But when he get hard, oh, it's a difference. You better know that it's a substantial difference, nigga. You better, <laughs> you better catch on to that part, all right? I hope you understand, substantial. That's what they said, all right? So a man's biology does play a role and whether, um, you know, his thing gets hard and all that kind of stuff. Uh, the the um, I guess the penis really is just elastic, man. It allows the penis to become fully erect. It allows it to, uh, the penis can get, get hard and grow. It can get small. It's uh, what do you call it? elasticity. So that's basically what it is. And um, as most men age, the elasticity of the tissues in the penis, they reduce. So it is true. It does get small. So number three. All right, this is the third one we got. We got to consider this one too, all right? Um, Y'all got to understand, guys, size can't change. No matter how hard you try, um, no matter what doctor you call, no matter what pills you take, you say, uh, it just ain't going to happen, bro. Despite all the pumps, the pills, the practices, and and all the shit, the, e the emails you get every day, you look at them and you be like, man, I'm going I'm to try it. I'm going to try it like, 
There's never has been a way and there really is no way to increase the size, bro. So you just got to chill. Genetics is genetics. And it's just like, whatever you got is what you was going to have, regardless of whether you wanted it or not. <laughs> so it is what it is, man. And um, after your last growth spurt, after them 10 years, bro, I mean, the testosterone sits still for, uh, is that what it's called? Titesterone? Something like that. It sits still for a few minutes, man. And then... Um, before you know it, it's going to stay like that until you reach a certain age and then it starts to depreciate as well. So, um, I don't know, man, but it, it, it does say that if you uh, use a cock ring, you know, it can give you a stronger, longer erection and uh, it'll make you feel bigger, if anything else. So that's what's up, man. I, I, I don't know, bro. Hey, this is kind of crazy, man. I'm I'm really not sure what the, what the hell just happened here. But yeah, so that's what's up. Um, Science does suggest that a, a man's penis will remain more elastic if he uses it more often. OK, so basically what that means is it can potentially stay the size it's supposed to if he uses it more. So remember that. Don't be tripping when he come in there time of me. I want to do something. You're going to do something because you're saving his elasticity. I, did I say that right? Man, you're saving this dude like Jesus Christ, man. I mean, let me take a break. We'll be back in a few seconds. Hey, yo, it's your big homie Bobby Dollars. Hey, man, I don't know if you've been checking out the YouTube channel or not, man, but if you haven't, you need to get over there, bro. It's like a talk show. Hey, just look for the Bobby Dollars show. You hear me? With that money bag logo. Hey, come holler at your big homie. Right, so we are back. And it's time to talk about the women, bro. I know we was probably a little bit embarrassed a minute ago. We was kind of going through it. But right now, it's day time. So let's make this part happen. You hear me? Um, I don't know, man. Hey, we kind of know about the woman's body a little bit. Not more than we should, but enough to know that these little terms and facts and everything that I'm about to spit at you is understandable. <laughs> like, you should be able to understand every single thing that I'm about to tell you. And if you don't know, push pause, go ask your chick, say, hey, lady, can I speak to you for a few minutes? And you ask her everything you need to, and then you come back, unpause, and continue. I mean, it's carnal knowledge. Why not? So what we can say about women is something that I did not know, and this is something that a lot of women may know or may not know. But if you're doing it raw when you're making your OnlyFans and you're twerking for the work and you're getting that paper, you chasing that bag, you know what I'm saying? Only fans, all that type shit. Well, check this out. You can still get pregnant five to eight days after having sex. Oh, yeah, that's the truth, man. It could be five days later and the sperm say, ah, shit, I had a nap. I got to get back on the road. And there you go. And that's, that's the problem right there, man. It could be eight days later. It could be more lazy than it was. Now, if the sperm take eight days, <laughs> Whatever child you have, I hope it ain't a son because he's going to be borrowing her car and dropping off at work and, and never mind, man, whatever. But, you know, hey, that's the truth right there, man. Five to eight days, bro. After the after the dude do what, you still can catch feelings and, and catch catch the real one. <laughs> so you better be cool. Five to eight days later. Um, for all y'all ladies, man, all y'all Cardi B's, your red bottoms on, you know what I'm saying, your stripper heels. All that type of shit. Well, here's a fun fact for your ass. <laughs> Wearing high heels can negatively affect a woman's orgasm. Oh, yeah. No, I, I ain't lying. I, I didn't study. You heard that. You heard me. You heard. I tried it. You heard me. Uh-huh. I did. I said that. I said what I said. Wearing high heels can negatively affect a woman's orgasm. So when you in them heels all night long, you at the club, you kicking it and this, that, and the other, and then you go to the crib and you kick it with that dude that you just met at the 7-Eleven and he bought you that Slurpee and y'all went to the crib and you like, girl, he ain't make me know. You know why? Because you had heels on for nine hours. That was your fault, not his. Hey, I'm here for, f I, you know what? Well, let me stop. <laughs> let me chill, man. Hey, but that's the truth, though. It's like wearing high heels, man, can negatively affect it. So that's what it is, man. But, but I guess the key to it, though, is the fact that orgasms can make women more creative so shit do it yourself you never know man you might write a book or something i mean that's what exactly what it says orgasms can make women more creative so 
when you're ready to sit down and write your book or, or you know, uh, I don't know, write a script, get ready to sing a song, play the violin. I don't know, man. Put your kicks on and go tumble or play tennis. I don't know, man. Hey, this is what you need to do first. You got to run right? one out. That's what you need to do first because it makes you more creative. Good ideas, people. That's what I'm talking about. Rub one and out. then secondly here, this is something that really blew my mind because when I read this one, <laughs> I had to include it, man. It was like, damn, um, I would always get mad and be like, damn, man, why they sit down so much? They always sitting down and she like, get our ass up, man. She always complaining about her legs, her feet and all that type of shit. But then she always sitting down and, and she tells she need to lose weight, but then she always sitting down. Well, it says right here, sitting in chairs can arouse women. No wonder your ass is always sitting down, man. That's crazy. I never would have thought that. What kind of chair, though? But it don't say that. It just says sitting in chairs, plural, all types of them, as many as you can. <laughs> so <laughs> if you're a dude listening to this podcast, it is absolutely up to you. Go to the store right now and buy about 10 chairs. Place them all around the house. By the time she gets to the bedroom, <laughs> she should be ready from sitting down all day long. And you should be good, bro. Hey, real talk. Like, you should be good, though. I'm just stating facts here, people. That's all. That's all it is, man. I'm just letting y'all know what the Bad Girls Bible told me on badgirlsbible.com. Okay, so, um, wow, man. It's crazy, man. Hey, <laughs> this is crazy. I, it's, it's fun, though, because I'm learning a few things here, and I think we're learning right now. Um, we might as well keep reaching. Why not? So um, let's go ahead and jump into... The psychology, okay, of it all. I'm talking about the psychology of a woman's sexuality. And I searched psychology today for this one, psychologytoday.com, and I got this information. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's like 14 in total. And I wanted to give y'all a few. So let's jump down on this one, man. Like, okay, so the first one is if you decide that you want to address the clitoris, the labia, or the vagina. And you want to address them all in one term, you know, paraphrase it up. You just want to talk about one thing, but it's actually three things. But you're talking about one thing. You just call it the vulva. That's all. Just the vulva. That's all it is, man. You know what I'm saying? It's just encompassing all of them in one. You hear me? That's all it's doing. So <laughs> instead of talking about one particular section of it all, you just talk about the vulva. And she'll understand because you're talking about the whole situation. You know what I'm saying? Everything that matters. So it's all good. All right. So let's go to the second one, man. So the second one was pretty interesting. It says that the, the clitoris, man, it grows throughout a woman's life. You understand? So it says after menopause, the clitoris can be... Hey, whoa, man. Hey, I just lost it. Hold on. It said after menopause, the clitoris can become two and a half times larger than it was when she was a teenager. So my question is, if they have menopause and they're supposed to lose the sensation and the want and all that kind of stuff, I guess, why would the click get two times the size, two and a half times the size that it normally was when she was growing up all her life? So I guess that's a lie, man. So I guess that's the truth. After menopause, I guess when you hit 50 or however old, I don't know, don't don't at me, man. I don't know. <laughs> when you hit that certain age and you go through it, I guess you're supposed to get back active. I don't know. That's crazy, man. But it's very, very interesting. I I will say that. As a guy that's been married for 20 years, now I'm kind of anxious. I can't wait till I hit 50 and shit. Who knows? All right, so let's move on to the next one, man. The next one, again, about the clitoris. It says the clitoris is only partially visible to the naked eye. It's actually close to four inches long, bro. I mean, the size of a non-erect penis is it's actually <laughs> four inches long within there. But three-fourths of it, you know what I'm saying, it's only within view. So it's like the buried treasure. Like, that's crazy, bro. Like, to think four inches, no wonder that mug's so powerful and it do what it do. Hey, that's crazy. I don't really think, though, a woman, like, has a size thing about her clit. Like, I don't think she'd be, girl, my clit. 16 centimeters long she how long is yours you know i don't think she trip off shit like that uh the way men do about their penis like i don't know i mean do women actually get a little ruler and measure it up i'm not sure 
I really couldn't tell you. I mean, I know my wife has them. I've never seen her. If she has, she's done it. And I don't know. <laughs> you know, and I think I'm going to ask her. I'm going to ask her one day and see, you know, because that's pretty damn interesting. You know what I'm saying? But here goes some real talk for your ass, though, just in case you was wondering. <laughs> Women who give birth tend to have a larger clip, okay? And the longest one that they've ever measured was 12 inches long. A whole foot, bro, like a ruler. Like it, like when you have a baby, your click get longer. It jumped from four inches. This one was 12 inches long, bro. Like, damn. That's like, no wonder she's squirting in. That's like sensation all the way to the back of her neck or something like that's crazy, bro. Hey, that's crazy. Hey, man, it's sex temple, bro. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm lost here. I'm lost in the sauce right now, you dig? And that shit is crazy, bro. 12 inches. Hey, but these are some fun facts, man. Fun facts I got off of uh, badgirlsbible.com. Um, sex temple. We talking sex facts. Um, let's move on to the next one, man. Number five. Okay, so in this one, it basically stated that the clitoris contains 8,000 sensitive nerve endings. Hey, that's double the amount that's in the penis, bro. So that's like, man, that's outrageous. That's outrageous. No wonder she be OC with it. Hey, that's that's all. Hey, that's outrageous, bro. Enough said. Damn. Okay, so we'll move on to number six then. Uh, the, the oh, okay, yeah, I've heard my wife talk about this. The clitoral orgasm can bring about anywhere between three to sixteen contractions. Okay, it can last from ten to thirty seconds, bro. Ten to thirty. Okay, three to sixteen contractions. That is, ah, oh, bro, like ten to thirty seconds. That's what's up. But that still don't exclude the fact <clears throat> that uh, many women do have multiple orgasms. You know. When they do that and it's multiple, that include pelvic contractions too. So that's where we at, man. Hey, that's crazy, bro. Hey, that's that's absolutely nuts. But I love it though. Hey, them some real facts, man. Just in case y'all fellas didn't know and y'all didn't understand. Hey, that's what's up, man. So I don't know, man. Like uh, the psyche part of it all is in order to make that, I guess clitoral stimulation you got to stimulate the brain and and since i gave you all that insight on the clitoral part here's something for the brain as far as i know i was always told you got to stimulate the mind too man you can't you can't just get down you got you got to stimulate the, <laughs> the mind too so here goes some stimulation for you fellas man all right you take this right here and you use this to help penetrate that mental part Burn some incense, light some candles, shit, watch some porn, listen to some music, preferably some shit she like. But some women like trap music too, though. So you might, you know, never mind. But anyway, uh, and read some romance, bro. Like, y'all can read some erotica together. I know, like, uh, me and my wife, we used to read books back in the day, and it was fun. I ain't gonna stunt, man. It was all good. You hear me? All right, it's Sex Temple, man. It's your big homie, Bobby Dollars. Um, we just went on ahead and gave, well, I just went on ahead and gave y'all some fun sex facts, man. Some things that were pretty interesting. A few of them I didn't know myself. Um, I hope y'all enjoyed the episode, bro. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I'm digging the, the little music and everything. You hear me? Hey, I know we all know the little music and shit. That's what's up, though. Hey, y'all be peaceful, man. Stay, stay where you need to be. Wear your mask. Wash your hands. Wash your ass. You hear me? Like, take care of business, bro. That's what time it is, man. Bobby Dallas.